If you're new to using Notion, then the databases feature in Notion can be quite intimidating. And that's why I wanted to create this video to have a, a thorough a beginner introduction to this topic um, and to show you how powerful this feature actually is and why you should definitely check it out. My name is Janos and this is Janos Workspace. If you're a beginner Notion user, then you might be quite intimidated by the Notion databases feature. Uh, so that, that's why I wanted to create this video to introduce you to the topic and to show you uh, why it's not even uh, that hard and why you should definitely take a look at it. So yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the video. The first thing that um, I usually get asked or that I've, um, the first question that I've come across is uh, what are Notion databases in the first place and uh, what would you use them for? And in the end, Notion databases are just a flexible way to organize, view, uh, edit and display your information in Notion. Um, they are a bit like uh, spreadsheets in Google Sheets, so if you've used something like this, um, then it will not be too hard for you, I think. So the first thing I usually like to do to introduce somebody to uh, Notion databases is to show them the table view. That's what I'm uh, talking about. This is what looks uh, really similar to uh, Google Sheets or Excel spreadsheets. Uh, we've got this recipe demo database right here and uh, it has these different rows right here. So different rows, different columns. Each of these rows is for a different recipe that I like and each of the columns is for a property. So uh, for uh, like the recipe, uh, then there's the rating, then there's the course, uh, a link to the actual recipe, uh, and then whether or not I've tried it. So these different properties are used to give context to our information in the database. So um, obviously uh, for each recipe, the rating gives us a information about uh, whether or not uh, I actually liked the uh, meal or not. Uh, and the same for all the other information. And there are many different types of different properties you could use in Notion. Um, so I'll go over some of the most basic ones uh, that you'll probably use in the beginning um, now. So uh, if we click on this plus button, we can actually create a new property. And now we can choose the property type right here. So the very basic property type is just text. And you can just, yeah, as it says, it's just a text field that you can write some text in. Then we also have the number um, property type. I'll just click on that. And now we can type any number like uh, 65, for example. And I can also like click on this little button in the uh, corner and I can change it around to be a number, a number with commas, a percent uh, percentage, uh, or uh, any of these different currencies as well. Next up, if I click on the column again, I can change it to a select uh, value. Uh, and select is actually um, a property type that allows you to uh, choose a value from a predefined list of values. So uh, for example, uh, this is what we have for this course. So if I click on this, there's these three different options, dinner, snacks, and dessert. And I can uh, choose any one of them uh, to use for my uh, recipe. Um, but in this case, uh, since this is a normal select, I can only choose one of them. So if I click on dinner, then it changes to dinner and the dessert um, property uh, goes away. Um, there's also the option to do this with uh, the next property, which is a multi-select. And if I change it to a multi-select, I can actually change, uh, use like multiple values. So now you see uh, it's in the category dessert and the category snacks. The next properties I'll go over a bit quicker. So there are properties like uh, the date, which you can use to specify a date. This is really useful for the calendar view, which I go over in my database views explained video. So check that out if you want to learn more about the calendar view. Um, yeah, so that's where you usually use that. The person, this is actually nice if you use Notion with uh, different people. So uh, you could have uh, like a field that assigns a certain role, for example, in your uh, project management database uh, to a certain person, like a task that's assigned to uh, somebody that has to do the task. Then we also have the files and media uh, like property. Uh, you can use that to upload an image or a PDF or um, any number of files actually um, right into your Notion database. The checkbox is the uh, feature that we have in the front right here. So it's just a box that we can check or not check. And that's really useful for filters as well. So uh, we can use that to filter or sort our databases, um, which I'll show you in another video. Lastly, we also have the URL 
the email and the phone and these are just they just do what they uh, they tell you so it's just the URL field is just for a URL or a web link uh, the phone uh, one is for a phone number and the email one is to enter in an email address now what makes Notion databases so powerful is that all of these different entries which exist in this uh, in this database they are all the individual pages as well. So let's go with um, maybe the roasted red pepper rigatoni right here. If I open this, this is actually its own page. So I'll just open it up as a page. And now you see the database properties. These are actually like shown at the top right here. And then it actually pulled in like information from the website. So that's, uh, we, I used the web tipper for that, uh, more in a, in a different video as well. But um, as you see, like we have a, a single individual page for each of these recipes. And the powerful thing is, like if I scroll down here through this entire recipe, um, I could actually have uh, different databases or different pages uh, within that page in the database. So um, you can like nest these pages within each other and create really complex workflows. So I could say, uh, like type in slash page to create a new page like this. And then I'd have a page within that roasted red pepper rigatoni page. So I could just name it test and then go back to the other page. And if I scroll down now, you see uh, all the way down here, we have this new test page. The next thing I want to show you are the different database views, which is also a really powerful feature in Notion. Uh, so views allow you to see your data in your database in different ways. So uh, we have these different entries and now they're shown in a table view, but we could also show it in a different view. So if you click on this little menu up here like this, um, you see I've set up these different views uh, already. You can also set up a new one right here and there's different ones to choose from. But I, first of all, I want to show you these different views that we've set up already. So the first one is the gallery view. This is a really nice view because uh, as you see, it shows these uh, little el different elements, so different recipes that we set up um, in this like uh, little card style with a image that's actually pulled from the website where we got the uh, recipe from and then some of the properties uh, that we actually want to use. What you can also do is you can um, like edit which properties are shown right here. So you could say, I want to actually show the rating as well, um, but maybe I don't want to show if I've tried them. So like this, and now you see we have a different, um, yeah, it looks different and we see different properties uh, based on what we want to see. And this is obviously a really nice view for uh, recipes, especially uh, because you actually see what the end result might look like after you are finished cooking. The next one we can look at is the board view. This is a Kanban style board. So it actually sorts your database entries into these different columns based on a single property. So in this case, it's sorted by the rating or grouped by the rating. I could also say group it by course for example like this and then we have the dinner column the snacks column and the dessert column like that now one of the nice features here again is that you can actually like drag the elements around so I could like choose the baked nachos and say hmm maybe uh, you know maybe uh, like actually I have to change these around as well because uh, the four stars is obviously less um, but maybe let's say I liked the baked uh, nachos much more than last time so I'll like upgrade it to the five stars like that and now you see also if we click on it um, it actually now has the um, five star rating assigned to it um, so just by dragging it around we can actually change the properties as well the last thing that I want to show you is the difference between a full page database and an inline database. So in our case, this recipes demo database is actually a full page database, uh, which means that there can't be any additional content on the page uh, besides the actual database. Um, but if I go back to this page right here and I click on like, a, like add a new table, oops, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Need to delete that like that. And uh, now I'll type in slash table. I'm not able to type right now. And now you see I can choose between the inline and the full page version. Um, so if I click on inline, you see that the, the database actually appears within our page, which has additional content. Uh, and so like this is really useful if you want the database to appear on a page uh, with other content around it. Uh, and the other one, the other version, like the recipes demo is better if you want to have a database, a full page dedicated to just this one database. 
All right, that's it already for this short introduction to uh, Notion databases. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to learn more about Notion in general and uh, about all the different features that it has um, and what you can do with them, then um, you can first of all uh, subscribe to the channel because I will definitely be uh, adding more content uh, about Notion. And also you can check out my Notion 101 course, which is available on Udemy and Skillshare, where you can watch it um, on Udemy, it costs like $10. Uh, on, on Skillshare, you can actually view it for free if you sign up for a trial account. So that's really appreciated if you want to support me. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a like if you did. And uh, other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye.